Here we are, guys, for one last time. It's time to bring this to an end. It's been a long and perilous journey. Well, no, it hasn't really, but uh, whatever. It's time to bring this to an end, nonetheless. Um, now we're coming to a part which is probably the most faithful to the book, which is uh, the part where you go to the trapdoor and fight the various things. Hagrid's going to give us a flute here, which will come in handy very shortly as it happens. Some creatures find music very relaxing. Some creatures find music relaxing. You can send Surely the all creatures find music fact, relaxing. Well, certain kinds of music anyway. I can't imagine anyone finds like Metallica or ACDC relaxing. But uh, certainly I imagine pretty much all creatures find that certain type of music relaxing. This is pretty straightforward. You just got to press the right buttons. It's not even a question of pressing them particularly quickly. It's just uh, not pressing the wrong buttons. It's the same combination over and over, it's dead easy. I could have made this a bit more challenging, really. But there's so many areas of this game that could have been much better, really. This could have been a really good game, actually. If they just uh, maybe added in a few sort of extra elements here and there. As it is, it's just sort of okay for a first attempt at a Harry Potter game. Oh, look, it's Ron Hermione. He's the creator of the Philosopher's Stone. Supposedly it can oh, grow just sort of conveniently it figured it all out. If it's here, there may be snakes after it. Snape? Why would Snape be after it? Do you just assume he's evil? Find a way to get past Fluffy. That must be where the stone is being kept. Ron Why do you assume that? God, you doorway, know, if you hadn't read the book or seen the film, you would not understand this bit at all. Come on, Ron, but then again, if you haven't read the book or seen the film, um, why are you playing this game? Ron's there in Thusiac, I suppose. Mm. Not really bothered either way. This is kind of annoying, you've got to walk all the way back to the upper castle. Uh, we've got to trudge all the way through the Hogwarts crowns, back to the entrance. And uh, now what we've done is we've entered the first door on the left when you enter the upper castle. A quick save point there if you want to use it. Uh, there are other save points later on that you can use, so you don't have to use that one. Harry, this part of the game is sort of somewhat stone. difficult Harry, if you don't I know what you're doing. Brave, but promise me you'll be very careful. I don't need to be careful. I know what I'm doing. It's you that needs to be careful. One last update on the house point status. Well, it's the last update uh, the next. The next time we uh, see these hourglasses, it will be uh, the final result. Hufflepuff. Slytherin. Oh, Slytherin have done really well this time. Gryffindor. Not such a good total this time for Gryffindor. I don't know what happened. Slytherin, are Slytherin have a decent lead now. It's getting very close and very tense. Well, not for Ravenclaw and Hufflepuff, they've done rubbish. But anyway, there's the house points. And now, Fluffy. Unlike the film, this is the first time we see him in the game. And for... what is, what is the PlayStation? It's 32-bit, isn't it? The original PlayStation. 32-bit, so that's not too bad. Do you remember that Hagrid said that he used to calm Fluffy with music? Try and play the tune that Hagrid mentioned to put each of Fluffy's heads to sleep. Did Hagrid there, mention in the previous scene that he wished Fluffy was as easy to put to sleep as that owl? Well, as it turns out, Fluffy is that easy to put to sleep. It's exactly the same as the owl, except you've got to do it three times rather than just once. This is a bit annoying, because every time you start playing the flute, Fluffy will attack you. You have to get quite close to Fluffy, actually, to be able to play it. But once you get into a good position to start playing it, you've basically done it. Again, it's exactly the same as the owl, the combination you've got to press. It doesn't change at all. But that's kind of annoying. I understand Fluffy attacking you, you know, if, if you make a mistake, but why does the Fluffy attack you if you do it right? That's really annoying, that. Oh, and again. 
And for whatever reason, he doesn't attack that time. I don't know, I don't understand this bit. And again. And this part's my fault. Made a mistake there. Spare a thought for the uh, head on the uh, left here. Collapses to its side and has two other dog heads collapse on top of it. That can't be very pleasant for it. But anyway, now we go into the first sort of mission. Inside the trapdoor. Devil snare. Ooh, scary. Oh, man, he's very cowardly. Just hide behind some reefs. Oh, I'm so glad we know what it's called. It's a great help. Well, it is a help, actually, Ron, because by knowing what it is, we therefore know how to defeat it. So, Ron, you're talking complete rubbish, as usual. Anyway, these uh, smaller tentacles are pretty straightforward. You just attack the one that's uh, sort of brightly coloured. Uh, it's the middle one that people struggle with. Which you're going to see in a minute once I've defeated these. Now these tentacles don't actually do very much. They don't move, they don't uh, try to attack unless you get really close to them. The middle one will actually try to sort of crush you. It sort of slams itself down. And uh, it can actually go back inside its uh, little hidey hole thing and uh, it replenishes all the health. However, I've discovered a little trick that if you just keep firing sort of mini flipendos at it, it stuns it for long enough that uh, it never has a chance to go back into its little hole. I don't really understand why that hurts it because. It appears to actually just be hitting all around uh, the tentacle, rather than the tentacle itself. Anyway, just a quick incendio once you've uh, got its health all the way down. And uh, there you go. Easy as that. A lot of people have trouble with that. But if you know the trick, it's dead easy. Wait for me or anything, guys. For all the work that you did. And uh, once again, Harry's forced to do all the work here as well. This, uh, this is pretty straightforward what you've got to do here, but uh, I had a bit of trouble actually. I just couldn't seem to find my bearings, uh, and it actually took me a lot longer than it should have done. Dum -dum. Started out alright. You've got to avoid the red keys, they uh, like attack you if you get too close. At least there's no like uh, annoying commentary from Lee Jordan while you're doing this. And once again, it's a flying mission where you're flying through rings. This is plenty of room, unlike uh, the ones in the courtyard. Actually, that many other keys. I hadn't noticed that before. You don't actually fly uh, at the keys at all. They just sort of chase you around. So as long as you don't like make any kind of dramatic change in direction, it should be fairly easy to avoid. And I thought I was doing all right here, but then it all goes wrong. I don't know what I was thinking here. Like I'm trying to avoid the rings the way I'm flying here. 
epic fail. Flying fail. That's what you would call it. And here's a real uh, face palm moment coming up uh, any moment now, I think. Lost the key. Lost the key. Found it again. Nearly messed it up completely there. And just one more ring and I've done it, but no. I have to make a complete mess of it. Of course. I've just noticed there doesn't appear to be any floor to this room. It's just a sort of bottomless pit. Why are Ron and Hermione standing? Went back straight at the red keys, that was stupid of me. Oh man. Having some epic failure here. Come on. Two more rings, that'll probably do it. Oh, another key. God, they're brutal, those keys, when they want to be. Well, it can't be a nice life being a key. I mean, what do you do, exactly? You don't have mouths, you don't have opposable thumbs, you don't have legs, all you've got is these, like, wings. It can't be much of a life being a key. Oh, I had a real trouble catching the key as well. Which is really stupid because it's so simple catching the key. And now the floor miraculously reappears. And the door conveniently unlocks without the key, strangely enough. That's kind of odd. Anyway, here's another area where you can save your game. However, it's secret, because you have to go through the secret wall. Haha, -ha, but you didn't know that. Unless, of course, you hooked it up, like I did. Yeah. I bet you thought I was being really clever. But I wasn't, I just looked it up. And you can also replenish your health, obviously, with these frogs. But the main thing is, you can save your game. Anyway, that's that. Uh, another frog to replenish my health. Which actually does need replenishing, really, because uh, it was such an epic failure in that uh, key mission. And now, we go to play chess. Which is always fun. Chess is fun. I like chess. The next puzzle is a gigantic chessboard. This is actually a quite a good puzzle. I hope he's all right. This is the one time when Ron actually does something to help. I've defeated most of the pieces, Harry, but I don't think I can go on. It's up to you now. Oh, Ron, are you all right? Harry, you he have looks to be fine, Harry. the pieces. They all move one square at a time. Oh, so they're all like uh, the king, basically. Basically, what you've got to do here is you've got to get two pieces onto the same square at the same time. Uh, so it's nothing like real chess. They all move like the king, basically. Just one square in any direction. And you can move like a king as well. Just one square in any direction. And for whatever reason, if one defeat... One, if one piece defeats another, the piece that uh, did the defeating, if you like, is also destroyed. That doesn't make any sense to me, but uh, I suppose it helps it out a little bit. And the key to this puzzle is just making sure you don't go onto a square that is adjacent with another piece. As long as you just make sure you're not doing that, uh, you should be fine. I don't know what these pieces are supposed to be. Pawns, I guess. Although, of course, pawns don't move like that. The pieces all move in... in direction. Uh, to the square that's closest to you that they can move to. At any time, so... It shouldn't be too hard to uh, getting them close together. Uh, there's three boards uh, in this mission, so... Uh, Basically, that was the first of them, and this is the second. Some slightly larger pieces. But don't let that intimidate you. They're exactly the same. Doesn't 
wouldn't make any difference if they're black or white either. Black pieces will defeat other black pieces, and white pieces will defeat other white pieces. They're kind of doing themselves in by defeating pieces because uh, doing so causes them to be defeated themselves. I don't get that myself, but uh, whatever. Nasty. There we go, that's the second board completed. Aha! Epic win. If that's a phrase, I don't think it is actually. This one is actually quite tricky. It's took me a while to figure out uh, how to do it. Basically, you just gotta head over to the left, and then by the time you've gone all the way to the left, it should be fairly self explanatory what you have to do to get the remaining pieces to fight themselves, fight each other, whatever. But uh, the first time I played this game, this third board took a little bit of figuring out. I would say it's the only really hard one. The other two are pretty straightforward. So there we go, there's the first pair defeated. I think there's six pieces on every single board, so you've got to basically have three of those instances where two pieces go into the same square. Very frightening. These really tall pieces like three times your size. But they're pretty easily defeated. <laughs> Silly of me. Yeah, I guess they're supposed to be queens, but obviously they don't move like queens, so I don't know. Here we go with another one. Bang! I like the way ex they explode. Come on, Hermione! Let's leave Ron to die. Yeah. Real thoughtful of you, Hermione. But anyway. Another save point. Another secretive save point. <gasps> it's a secret. There you go, there's where you can save. And once again, some chocolate frogs. And that was a bit stupid of me, jumping off there and causing myself to die. Well, not die, but... Uh, Lose a bit of health. Silly, silly me. But oh, never mind. There's another frog there. And uh, this is where it's actually more faithful to the book than the film, because this bit, of course, is not in the film. Although at the same time, you could argue it's not being faithful to the book, because even though they do find a troll that's been knocked out uh, in the book. Uh, this, uh, specifically what happens here, uh, is not what happens to the, the troll that's not wake up in the book. And they don't have to charm objects out of its way. So I guess I should give the game designer some credit uh, for taking something from the book that actually wasn't much of a hazard or a challenge and actually making it into one. On the other hand, it's pretty straightforward, this. Although, strangely enough, I actually failed on a couple of occasions here. I don't know why, though. I've done this so many times already, and I know exactly what to do. I was just doing it normally. I, I don't know what exactly went wrong, but uh, the troll, for whatever reason, just woke up, just like midway through me doing this. This bucket actually makes quite a bit of noise when you put it down. I don't know why that doesn't wake the troll up. If the troll wakes up, you're basically dead. Uh, there's no way for you to s escape. Why are there all these objects just randomly situated in the middle of the corridor? That doesn't make no sense! the troll hasn't destroyed these objects, really. 
be honest. What does he need with such a small chair? But anyway, falls down that conveniently placed hole. And Hermione finally figures out how to open the door at the other one. end. Let's see what's next. Yeah, let's go, Hermione. And this is actually a little puzzle that you at home can participate in if you so wish. It's one of those uh, he's in one of three cup type things that you see people doing on the street from time to time and they move them around and you've got to try and guess which one it's in. So watch carefully. Okay, pause the YouTube video. Did you get it right? I was going to say that. Pause the YouTube video and make your own uh, guess on which one it is. Before you actually find out uh, which one it is. Which was obviously it was the uh, one on the right. And then once you defeat the knight, you get the potion. So that's nice. Obviously, you can't participate with uh, that part at home. That was me doing that. Great I don't know if maybe you figured that out for yourself. There's only one potion. You'll have to go on alone, I'm afraid. I'm going to find some help for Ron. Please be careful. How, Marnie? How are you going to get back? The door's locked behind you. Why does Marnie ca carry that book with her the, wherever she goes? Isn't that a bit impractical? I thought this corridor had uh, another save area, sort of secretive save area that you could go into. Uh, but it doesn't, which is kind of annoying. Kind of begs the question, why have this little corridor area? If you're not going to have a secret passage where you can save your game. This, this is me uh, right now, trying to look for it, and not finding it. But never mind. Now we can fight Quirrell. Well, not really fight Quirrell, but fight the things he sends at us. First, two knights. Which don't have shields, so just two quick charge for Pendos at them. Defeat them quite quick, quickly and quite easily. And they move so slowly. You're gonna have to do better than that, Quirrell. What's he got this time? <gasps> now this guy's got a shield, that makes things a bit more difficult. Oh, look at him running around like a headless knight. Doesn't know what he's doing. Right. Got a bit of trouble with this guy. Pendo. Oh, dear. More epic fail, I think. Ah, there we go. And our last one. Just the one knight this time. Takes a few more hits, though. And also has the ability to sort of turn invisible. But then he just stands there after attacking. Which uh, makes him rather vulnerable to attacks. I guess this is uh, the sub final boss, I guess you could say. Obviously, the final boss that you fight is uh, Voldemort. Or Quirrell, depending on how you look at it. Come on, attack me. Got lucky there, I think. I didn't get it. Oh, should do it. There we go. And that, for whatever reason, causes like a sort of earthquake of some kind. One giant falling rock. Re somehow reveals it to be Quirrell. I don't know. That's about. 
don't know what that giant rock is for. You think uh, with such a giant like structure like that falling from the ceiling, s such significance, it would have some sort of use, but it doesn't. One thing that does have use, though, is this potion over on the right. And now we head in to fight Voldemort. The final room in the game. We're nearly at the end, guys. Just one more guy to defeat. <gasps> What's that? Harry has some sort of strange red hover floating phaser type thing. Oh, it's a stone. Right. Didn't look much like a stone, but whatever. <gasps> Quirrell's ball! It's an outrage! And less surprisingly, he has Lord Voldemort on the back of his head. Quirrell, how could he be so two-faced? <laughs> Hiss. <laughs> Dreadful joke. Uh, anyway, these sort of randomly placed columns fall over if you charge the pentagon. And you can use that to do. Not defeat him exactly, but uh, do a bit of damage. How uh, that mirror doesn't appear to reflect anything at all. It appears to be just some sort of translucent window. It's not much of a mirror. Oh, these ropes are annoying. If there was anything in the game that was more annoying than those ropes, I'd like to see it. I suppose the loading screens, maybe. I don't know what Voldemort's doing with these uh, attacks. I don't think they've ever hit me. I fought him like a good four or five times. And I, I don't think these uh, sort of green projectiles he shoots at me throughout the battle, and um, they've ever hit me. Because they just seem to sort of disappear midway through their journey towards me. It's not really much of a threat. You'd expect something a bit more threatening from the final boss, but whatever. And, uh, I think we're nearing uh, the end of the first stage of this battle. Perhaps one more collapsed column on top of his head will be sufficient. No, he's not going to stand over at that time. Curse you for not being convenient and allowing me to kill you, Voldemort. No, he's not going to do it again. No, but I rather stupidly cast Lupendo anyway. Here we go. Nasty. You will yield to me, Potter. You can't just Well, I can't really me, yield Potter. you if you're just gonna Surrender fire green stuff at me. This is your last warning. I think I've had a warning from all those green projectiles you keep shooting at me. Anyway, this is kinda weird. You've gotta shoot the panda into the mirror. Fires out the other side at both. Or it's supposed to anyway. That uh, that missed him for some reason. And then he's not stupid. He stands at the side of the mirror the next time. So you just got to wait for him to move again. So now we go to the other side of the mirror. 
last two for the Mendo enemy and the mirror in quick succession. And there we go. Very straightforward this battle. Whoa. Nasty sort of big green projectile there. That. that was pretty annoying that. They're pretty easy to avoid though. Such big sort of threatening looking things are actually pretty easy to avoid. <coughs> Pardon me. Come on. What's Harry doing with his feet? Looks like he's dancing. He looks like a crab. Why I did that? Whoa, that one hit me. It's funny how Harry has to fire Pependo through the mirror in order to attack Voldemort. You can't just attack him directly. How exactly did you manage to kill him for once, since you can't even kill me? I don't know exactly what Quirrell's doing here. I mean, we saw in the film that uh, touching Harry hurts Quirrell, so... He can't be touching Harry. And what are we doing exactly when we are, quote unquote, hurting Quirrell, as the instruction indicates? The very last thing you do in the game is probably, ironically, the easiest part of the game. <laughs> Just tapping buttons. Over and over and over. And there we go. That's it. That's the game over with. For another year. Well, not another year, but uh, to start anyway. And Harry uh, is so exhausted from tapping all those buttons that he decides to have it little nap. Well, you can't blame him, really. It's been a long, hard slog. And now we have the uh, end cutscene, or Dumbledore's storybook smile. sequence, what whatever you want to call it, which is fairly faithful to the book. And Professor Quirrell is a complete secret, he said. So naturally, the whole school knows the stone had been destroyed. But Harry remained fearful that its loss would not prevent Lord Voldemort's return. Oh, Dumbledore no. nodded. It doesn't, of course, does it? Concern. Nevertheless, Harry, if our battles do no more than slow Voldemort's return, with luck he may never regain his power at all. Well, we knew even at the time that this game was made that that was wrong. Alone that night. The great hall was decked out in green and silver. Some great work by the artist team who did this illustration with the, uh, clearly red drapes in the Great Hall, when they're obviously supposed to be green. Trying to ignore the stares of the other students. The House Cup, announced Dumbledore. Why is that is boy in the foreground doing with his hands? Points. At the moment, that would seem to be Slytherin. A storm of cheering and stamping broke out from the Slytherin ah, table. Now we have, uh, However, Slytherin uh, sort of drapes in recognition of Mr. Harry Potter's pure nerve that picture, but uh, courage. they were quite clearly red in the last one. Sixty points. Harry's table erupted with cheers and applause. That's not quite true to the book. It was uh, the house cup sixty points to Harry and I think fifteen to Ron and fifty to Hermione and ten to Neville. Better than winning at Quidditch or Christmas or knocking out mountain trolls. But whatever. He would never Gryffindor win the House Cup, that's the main thing. Get tonight. And now, we go into some really tediously long end credits. 
I don't think I've ever seen such long end credits to end, end a game. They're a lot longer than they need to be. I mean, you look at how long these credits are remaining on screen. It's a lot longer than they need to be. Like, how long does it take to read that? Like, two seconds? And they're on there for like five or six seconds. I don't get why these credits are so long. Maybe the game designers were so proud of what they'd done, they wanted to make sure they properly acknowledged everyone. Hmm, I wonder who that is. Probably someone cool. But anyway, that's the game for you. It's been fun. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I certainly did. I like this music. This music's nice and cool and fun. Whatever. Please let me know, guys, if you want me to do this kind of thing again. Because I had a lot of fun doing this. And I hope you guys had fun watching it. So if you want me to do another one, just say. Say the word. Say the word and you'll be free. Say the word and be like me. <laughs> I don't know why I just did that. And then maybe just saying random things reminds me of random Beatles songs. Something like that. What are those weird yellow light type things. Are they fireflies? I don't know. They could be anything. QA manager. I don't even know what that means. Oh, these credits are so long. You can't skip them either. The last Harry Potter film comes out this summer. Let's hope it's good. Because to be honest, I was a little disappointed with the first part of uh, Deathly Hallows. What's that dancing scene with Ron with uh, Harry and Hermione in it for? That's not in the book. Why the hell did they decide to put that in the film? That's almost as uh, pointless as... Uh, well, actually, yeah, no, I'd go further than that. I'd say it's more pointless than Beretic, Berelix, the strange setting fire to the burrow in uh, Half Love Prince. A lot of uh, fans of the books have a lot of problems with some of the films, like adding scenes in. I actually didn't mind uh, Harry falling out of the car in uh, Chamber of Secrets, or Ron being hit in the face with a broom in uh, Philosopher's Stone. But, uh, Beretix, the strain, setting fire to the burrow, and uh, the dancing. Harry and Hermione doing the tent. Uh, I don't understand the purpose of either of those scenes, to be honest. I'll tell you one thing I did like about that film. Dobby died. People who uh, haven't read the books and do see the films might have been confused actually as to why Dobby's death was such a big deal since he hadn't appeared since the second film. They might not even have uh, realised who he was. I heard a rumour the other day that uh, they had originally planned to put Peeves in uh, the first film. He's going to be played by Rick Mayer. I guess uh, they'd been watching Drop Dead Fred. I'm very glad in that case that uh, they didn't put Peeves in because uh, I can't stand Rick Mayer. Why did they have to put him in Black Adder? That, that, like, ruined a hilarious show. That. And The Young Ones was also pretty funny, but, uh, once again, had Rick Mayer in it. 
<laughs> so it was crap. I know I'm getting a bit sidetracked here. I've gone off on a real like tangent now. But what else am I supposed to see with these constantly ongoing end credits? Like, why won't they end? There can't be much more for uh, these credits to come. What are they like? They're like they must be closer to like ten minutes long. These credits. What does QA stand for? I don't quite understand that. What are you doing next week? Are you going out somewhere? Hmm. I might be. I might go up to Newcastle and have lots of fun there. And next year I'm going to London. That'll be fun. Possibly we can see, like, the Great Britain football team win gold at the Olympics. That'll be fun. Yeah, the Olympics are going to be good. Even more good if we can get loads of medals. Maybe we can even win a gold or two. Here and there. Just for a laugh. What does W1 stand for? That doesn't make enough sense. Oh, oh, London W1. Still don't know what that means. When I talk about great voice actors, Jim Cummings. He's amazing. Wasn't in this game though, because he's American and uh, all the voice actors in this are obviously British. But for all I know, actually, knowing Jim Cummings, he can probably impersonate a British accent, actually. I think they're nearly over now. I think our patience may be rewarded any time soon. Yeah, gotta thank J.K. Rowling. Be no books, no films, and no games without her. Wouldn't even know what Harry Potter was. I wonder if she'll do any more books. You know, like, will she do any like crime fiction or mystery dramas or something? Maybe she'll just do another Harry Potter book. That'd be cool. Come on! End, you stupid credits. Oh, finally. Finally, let's see who will win Yeah, finally is right. Alright, have we won the House Cup? That's uh, the one other thing we need to find out. And then we can bring this thing to an end. We know uh, who the top two are. We know who the bottom two are as well. It's just a question of uh, is it Slytherin or is it Gryffindor? Hmm. Looks like Gryffindor have more Slytherin. points uh, on this particular batch of points than Slytherin. Gryffindor. Oh, if we got enough, it looks like it's going to be close. Gryffindor. Yeah, we did it, guys. We nipped ahead at the very last, and won it by a hair. Or a nose, I guess they say, don't they? Won by a nose. And we didn't get all the wizard cards, unfortunately. Rowena Raven. That was the last one we got. Medieval. Dates unknown. Co -founder yeah, we know this already. Gave her name to one of the four Hogwarts houses. Can't see the bonus ending, unfortunately, because we didn't get all the wizard cards. But anyway, that's that, guys. See you soon. I hope you enjoyed this. I certainly did.